Thank you very much for joining me on this Thursday. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. Three name systems out there. Adalia, that is Franklin, which feels like it's been out there for years at this point. And this here is Tropical Storm Jose. And then I'm watching off the coast of Africa. We'll see some development and the high potential of a long track hurricane uh, coming off the coast of Africa. Obviously coming off the coast, it wouldn't be a hurricane, but a tropical wave that turns into a tropical depression, tropical storm. And then eventually the hurricane, a hurricane, as it approaches the Caribbean. Now, what happens down the road, again, it could curve out, could move into the Caribbean. I wanna show you that because that's important. We're looking at what's next. I'm gonna show you the American model and the European model and what I'm seeing out of that. So here's the Caribbean. And again, that is newly formed Tropical Storm Jose. That was Tropical Depression 11. So we are way above average. It's been a very active season. Tropical Storm Jose it was classified as a tropical storm this morning, kind of gained a little more intensity. It'll be short lived, not a threat that is going to drift up to the north. And I want to get to Adalia if it'll loop or threaten Bermuda. I'm going to cover that in Franklin, still watching that, of course, for Canada. This blob here, you see that right there? I do believe that'll develop and move out to sea, but it's what's behind it that has my high attention for one of those long track systems systems that marches right across the Atlantic. So let me just dive right into that. So here's the Caribbean. We've got Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad, and Tobago. This is the American model. And again, I'll get into all of this with Adalia and Franklin ahead. But you see here again, one system curving up to the north. And now what the American model is doing, let me just take you out in time. This is through the weekend into next week. It's not developing anything quite yet, but by early next week, it is at least seeing something. It's seeing two strong tropical waves waves, one here and another one here. And again, it has the potential, especially this one, to develop into a tropical storm. And with that said, as it comes off the coast of Africa, it's at a low enough latitude that it should at least get closer to the Caribbean uh, down the road. We're talking a week and a half away. So again, giving you that early heads up that we've got something kind of bigger to watch out there. One spot right here and another spot right here. They both may develop, but at least one looks like it may take a trek toward the Caribbean and we'll see if it curls out. Now, this is the American model. Let me show you the European model. The European model is kind of all in on this scenario. It is developing a hurricane and a stronger hurricane. So let me show you this. Here's the Caribbean right here, Puerto Rico, Haiti, the Dominican Republic. Now we've got one system that curls away. Here's the coast of Africa, but this is what I'm looking out for. And this is this weekend. So again, Caribbean here, this area right here comes off the coast of Africa as a strong tropical wave. And then, this weekend, we'll see how that emerges. By next week, the European model latches onto it and says, hey, this is going to become a tropical storm and then become a hurricane. Let me take you into the middle of next week. So this is by the middle of next week, right by Wednesday. So this is down the road. And with that, I do expect it to change. Again, weather changes and evolves as you get past about a week. So again, watching this, look at this. It already has it as a tropical storm and a strong one by the middle of next week. And then it quickly develops it into a hurricane in a strong hurricane. After that, it's a big wait and see. Does it curl a little bit more and miss the uh, Caribbean? Let's sure hope so. I'm not rooting for any hurricanes whatsoever. Or does it move a little bit more this way? But point being, this has my attention. And again, this would be over a week from now that there could be something near the Caribbean. So next weekend, there could be a, a strong tropical storm or even a strong hurricane at least close to the Caribbean. What happens after that? I don't know. Again, that is way down the road. I'm really looking at the uh, steering conditions, high pressure to see how this will kind of filter in. But that spot clearly has my attention. The American model at least sees it in the potential of a tropical storm. And the European model saying, hey, one of these areas that comes off is going to be one of those long track hurricanes. Now, that makes sense. Again, this time of year, you get bigger systems. That's an easy call that we're going to be seeing some of these uh, stronger hurricanes out there uh, throughout the month of September. We're at the peak of the season, the peak itself, the actual day is September 10th. Again, August, September, and through the middle of October, it's usually very active out there. So of course, there's going to be some bigger hurricanes out there, but this is the one that I'm seeing that will be approaching the Caribbean uh, by the time we get into next week. And next week, of course, I'm going to have a great handle on if it will be a threat or if it'll curve out to sea. And let's hope it just kind of curls out to sea. Now, here's Adalia. This is Franklin, which feels like it's been out there for like 10 years at this point. 
Here's Bermuda, and it, it held right on track for Bermuda, kind of curling around, and eventually it'll weaken. And that is Jose. Again, that was Tropical Depression 11, became Jose last night. That'll be a very short-lived uh, system. But again, very heavy rain over toward parts of southeastern Virginia. I've been watching that in the morning. And again, uh, eastern North Carolina. Now, what's going to happen with Adalia? It could get very close to Bermuda. There's Bermuda right there, potentially as a tropical storm uh, by the second half of the weekend, Sunday and even into Monday. So heads up in Bermuda, we have the potential of Adalia coming our way as a tropical storm, uh, not seeing it as a uh, category two, three hurricane or anything like that, always watching. Now, yesterday in the last few days, the models were hinting at uh, Adalia looping around. You see the models right now coming off the coast of uh, North Carolina, kind of starting to make a bend and then curving back to Bermuda, Bermuda being right here. So almost all the models at this point bring a tropical storm close to Bermuda or right into Bermuda Sunday into Monday. Now, there is still a slight chance this just kind of gets stuck out there uh, and kind of curls back. I want to show you the steering conditions in a moment. Now, Bermuda itself, this will be our concern in the short term. Uh, again, Sunday into Monday. Now, as far as the timing goes, I'm still seeing kind of how it evolves because it's going to stall out briefly and then make its move toward Bermuda. But again, second half of Sunday, first half of Monday, that would be the uh, best chance of getting some tropical storm conditions. Those would be winds around 48 kilometers an hour or about 30 miles per hour, gust about 70 kilometers or 45 miles per hour. Sustained tropical storm winds are 39 miles per hour. It'd kind of be close to that, still a wait and see. Most of the models have it just kind of to the southwest of uh, Bermuda, but clearly I'm watching Bermuda for the possibility of some tropical storm impacts second half of uh, Sunday into the first half of Monday, and I'll be fine tuning that. Now, uh, does it curl around though? So uh, most indications are now uh, that what's left of Adalia will move toward Bermuda and then kick out to sea. There's still a slight chance that high pressure kind of temporarily builds in to kind of uh, build this back and to help it make a curl. I'm really not seeing that now. High pressure temporarily will build in, kind of stalling it a little bit, but then it'll kick it to Bermuda. But that's why the models were kind of swinging this back, showing a loop. They were saying yesterday, they were saying, hey, high pressure is gonna build in, winds around high pressure, by the way, they are clockwise, and that would kind of draw this back to the Bahamas. Not seeing that scenario now, but just wanna let you know that is still a scenario I'm keeping an eye on. So here is what's left of Adalia moving offshore. So we've got Bermuda right here. Uh, and then again, we've got Franklin on track, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland. Again, I've been watching us very carefully. Atlantic region of Canada. By the way, so many uh, viewers uh, from and subscribers from Canada, you're definitely sharing this channel. Thank you for doing so. Again, what's left of Franklin stays away. That stays offshore, but there'll be rain because of that front that I talked about yesterday. Uh, and then you see here, by the time we get into this weekend, watching Bermuda Again, some of this energy or Adalia itself gets very close on Sunday. Here's Sunday. So again, here's Bermuda. On Sunday, the American model is saying, hey, this is going to be a tropical storm, basically right on top of Bermuda on a Sunday. And then eventually on Monday and Tuesday, uh, finally kicking away from Bermuda and moving away. Not seeing any indications that this would be a strong system moving up to eastern Canada or anything like that. But again, Adal Adalia uh, will get close to Bermuda. So I'm going to monitor that. And what's left of Franklin has been on track from what we've been talking about now for about three to four days for the Atlantic region of Canada. And you see Franklin again, that'll be to the south of the Atlantic region of Canada. And then eventually one of these days, uh, it'll eventually fall apart and become extra tropical, no longer tropical in nature. So hurricane season as expected, at least on this channel, uh, has been way above average. Again, a lot of talk was about El Nino. It takes a while for a, a, a huge pattern like El Nino or La Nina to kind of take hold. And that's why it's been active. Yeah, we're getting into an El Nino period, but it takes a little while uh, for that to really crank up. So we've got Franklin out there, Adalia, and again, Jose is now out there. The next name on the list is Katia. And again, my concern with that will be uh, watching what's coming off the coast of uh, Africa. Heads up, Belize, my friends in Belize. Uh, we get over toward Cancun, watching uh, parts of uh, Mexico and Guatemala. It's been very active. Plus another blob of rain air, Panama and Costa Rica. In this sector here, 
we have the possibility of some flooding today. So again, very active parts of Central America and Eastern Caribbean Trinidad, again, generally on the active side, not looking at all day rain uh, over the next few days, but you see again, another little tropical wave, some tropical energy trying to move in near Barbados, Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I wish we could get a little bit more in the Northeastern Caribbean, Anguilla, Antigua, Barbuda, uh, Saba, Stacia, St. Bart's. We have been way too dry. Now, as we pull forward again into uh, tomorrow afternoon, same thing, Honduras and El Salvador, higher chance of rain over here. Scattered showers, Eastern Caribbean. Jamaica, we'll see a few showers and storms, but again, so hot. Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Jamaica, Cayman Islands, and Cuba. And then as we work our way into Saturday, see another little uptick in some of the rain right there. Eastern uh, Caribbean, we'll see more rain and still more rain. Look at that, Nicaragua, El Salvador, Guatemala, Belize, a decent chance of some rain in the forecast. And by the way, Eastern Pacific side, at least tropically speaking, really no activity activity out there. Almost all the activity has been in the Atlantic uh, Basin. So Trinidad and Tobago, as I was just showing you, again, rain chance stays on the elevated side, a 60% chance tomorrow and Saturday. Same thing in Barbados, 50% chance. We'll have scattered showers around Barbados the next few days, right through the weekend. We'll see that in St. Lucia, again, holding on to about a 50% chance. 60% chance by Saturday as we get into uh, Grenada. And as we work our way into St. Vincent and the Grenadines, little uptick in the rain tomorrow and Saturday, even Sunday at about 50%. Jamaica, some scattered showers and storms. Not as much today, a little bit more Friday and Saturday. Not a washout, not all day stuff. And again, on the hot side for sure, another 50% chance right through the Cayman Islands tomorrow and Saturday. 40% chance tomorrow in Belize, 50% chance on Saturday. By the way, I should raise that up a little bit. Again, uh, I think I forgot to update that, so just letting you know. Uh, again, a slightly higher chance today. I just showed you the blob of rain nearby. I don't know what I was doing when I was putting together some of these maps. Puerto Rico, Isolated storms around for us. Again, uh, we'll see about a 30% chance the next few days. Heat advisories, uh, excessive heat warnings, that sort of thing through the Virgin Islands and back through uh, Puerto Rico the next few days. Turks and Caicos, not much activity. Now, as we get into the Bahamas, Adalia is way to the north, but there's one of those feeder bands, northern Bahamas and parts of the central Bahamas. We're going to see some showers and storms around because of a feeder band that has stretched hundreds of miles down to the south from Adalia. Uh, Haiti, about a 30 to 40 percent chance of rain. Same thing in the Dominican Republic, and it is on the hot side. And again, there's that limited chance of rain over toward the uh, British and U.S. Virgin Islands the next couple days. Speaking of limited chance, Aruba, just a 5 percent chance today, mainly dry, mainly dry as we get over toward Curacao and Bonaire. Rain chance 30% next two days in Guadeloupe. As we get over toward uh, Dominica with some extra showers moving by, about a 40% chance Friday and Saturday, up to a 50% chance on Saturday in Martinique. And as we get back toward St. Kitts and Nevis and Montserrat, again, isolated. Northeastern Caribbean, there just hasn't been as much. Antigua, Barbuda, 20 to 30% chance. Same thing as we get into Anguilla, no big system uh, nearby. Of course, we'll be watching what's coming off the coast of Africa. St. Martin, Saba, Stacia, about a 30 to 40% chance and a 60 to 70% chance in Costa Rica. I mentioned Central America. Heads up, again, we've got some flooding nearby, uh, really all across Central America, Guatemala, watching El Salvador, Northern Venezuela, rain chance 30%, 20 to 30% chance in uh, Guyana and Suriname, again, a limited chance, 10 to 20% chance the next few days. So surely it is busy out there. Stronger tropical waves are going to emerge. That has my attention. I led the video with this. You could go back, take a look at the American model, European model, and generally what I'm seeing out there. Again, I do believe there could be a long track hurricane uh, developing. And just as we go forward, that's a little bit more likely. Adalia, watching that, will it make a loop? Right now, it doesn't look like it will, but I'm watching that for Bermuda as it gets closer to Bermuda and Franklin eventually finally will go away. Hurricane season itself ending November 30th. So it is busy. All eyes out there across the Atlantic Basin. I got a special attention on what's coming off the coast of Africa. I'll keep you updated on that every step of the way. Thank you for your trust on the hurricane season. Have a good rest of your day.